Hello and welcome to this introduction to the Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry Database. My name is Christine Fleming and I'm a Product Training Manager here at Elsevier. I'm sure you are aware of the multitude of ways that you can find the drug discovery information that you need. There are target databases, the PDB database, relevant medicinal chemistry journals and patents, substance databases like Reaxis and PubChem, and most of these supply you with the data in a variety of formats. But do any of them qualify as a single solution? Probably not. It is the goal of the Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry Database to help researchers collect relevant information quickly by being a decision support tool that enables you to switch seamlessly between scientific domains to access the data. Sometimes it may even be data that you hadn't thought of. Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry is independent from Reaxis. In other words, it is not a module and it is not an add-on. However, both products are highly synergistic. Today, I'd like to put this new solution into perspective in terms of the Elsevier Life Science Solutions suite, discuss the content, and then do a live demo. Elsevier's Life Science Solutions is a suite of interoperable decision support tools here you see tools used in the beginning of the drug discovery process, those dealing with discovery of targets and pathways, and then more substance-focused tools for compound properties, synthetic routes, and bioactivity data, and then tools like Pharmapendium and Embase that are, generally speaking, useful towards the end of the development process. Reaxis and Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry can be considered a bridge between the beginning and the end. Reaxis with over 500 million experimental facts and synthesis planning functionality, and Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry, used to identify and optimize those compounds with optimum affinity, selectivity, and admetox properties. The data contained within Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry is excerpted from peer-reviewed journal articles and patents the data is provided in a consistent and normalized format based on extensive, highly curated glossaries and taxonomies, allowing scientists to search for and filter on chemical compounds, molecular targets, quantitative and qualitative compound target interaction data, individual bioassays, and cell lines. Here you can see the main types of users of Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry. Medicinal chemists, of course, but also computational chemists, project managers, pharmacologists, and synthetic chemists. The three main users are shown in the middle, medicinal chemist, computational chemist, and project manager. Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry covers about 2.4 million compounds, about 9 million biological experimental results. Now this 2.4 million compounds may be considered a low number of compounds compared to Reaxis, but you have to consider the number of compounds that are available, just in general, that have good bioactivity and target data, not only for efficacy, but also for metabolism and PK. The data is arranged to give you relevant answers through a very powerful user interface. There are about 50,000 patents covered, mainly from the A61K class and going back to 1971. Journal coverage includes the top 40 medicinal chemistry journals, and also chemistry journals, pharmacology, and other journals similar to that. A little more than a thousand journals in all, and not just Elsevier journals, journals from other publishers as well. Essential information is excerpted, like compound synonyms, target affinity patterns, assay information, both in vitro and also cell-based, animal models, such as xenograft animals for anti-neoplastic drugs, and pharmacokinetic and ADME properties. And of course, one of the most valuable things about the database is that it allows you to interact with your workflow. Link to articles, patents, databases like Uniprot, PDB, Reaxis, DrugBank, Embase, and you can export data from Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry to your own third-party tool in a variety of formats, such as XML, SD file, etc. 
So what about its application to drug discovery? Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry gives you access to knowledge along the drug discovery chain. We have use cases for all of the categories shown here, like Project Kickoff, Compound Library, for example, HER-G model and SIP model, virtual screening, like phenotypic in silico screening, hit to lead, and also lead optimization when exploring the structural features of a series of compounds. I will focus on the first one today, the project kickoff, where you are focused on the target selectivity and the most active compounds. The demo will focus on AKT1 inhibitors. There are three members in this kinase enzyme family, AKT1, 2, and 3. AKT1 is associated with tumor cell survival, proliferation, and invasiveness. AKT2 is involved in the insulin signaling pathway, and AKT3 is a little less clear. Because of the processes associated with AKT1 and 2, we want to design compounds active on 1, but less active on 2. So let's move on to the demo. Here you see the query page. There are two main types of queries, molecule searching, for example name, structure, and physical properties, and bioassay searching, for example target family, assay, and effect, target name, species, cell, and parameters. I am looking for AKT1 as the target. The list is quite long, so you can search for the target name by clicking this icon typing in the name, and then clicking OK. Targets can be known by several different names. If you happen to know of AKT1 by a different name, it's not a problem. Click on the number 1 to see all of the synonyms for AKT1. I will copy and paste PRKBA into the box. Notice that it still finds AKT1 in the list. Now I want to select the parameters. Click the icon to limit the list to the most commonly used parameters. I want IC50, KI, and KD as the parameters. Now select the units. If the unit you need is not in the list, you can customize the list using the settings. For example, select M from the reference list and convert it to NM for nanomoles. Click Add Conversion Rule and then click Save. Now I will select 100 nanomoles for each one. This means that I want the IC50 values to be less than 100 nanomoles in my results. Start the search by clicking Get Molecules and Activities. Eighteen hundred and twenty four molecules are retrieved. I can look at the substances and sort them by name, publication date, or molecular weight. Look at the column header Enzymology Inhibition. The number 1 tells you that this substance was tested one time in this type of assay 
with the results falling within the parameters requested in the query. Sort the list to get the substances with the most data at the top of the list. The substance storosporine is at the top of the list. The numbers in the enzymology inhibition column mean that this substance was tested a total of 2,158 times in an enzyme inhibition assay, and the results fell within the requested parameters 10 times. The numbers are hyperlinked, and when I click on the 10, I see a listing of the assays and the results. The KI and IC50 values for each assay are shown here, and these values have all been normalized to nanomoles. So in other words, the data wasn't necessarily extracted in nanomoles. It could have been in moles, for example. But the results are normalized based on the units in the query. Details about an individual assay are found by clicking one of the links. The information for this one was excerpted from the Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics. There are links to other databases, like SwissProt and PDB. This tells you about the cells used, and the experimental conditions are shown. As I scroll down, you can see the exact IC50 value and the percent inhibition. I'd also like to point out the link to Reaxis. This is available to all users who have a license to both Reaxis and Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry. In Reaxis, you will find chemical property data, reaction data, and have access to all of the Reaxis functionality, such as the Synthesis Planner. I will return to the results overview. Well, now that I've retrieved all of this data, what can I do with it? There are several things. For example, I can select the data of interest, expand it, sort it, and then export it. First, I will select the enzymology column, since that is the data that I want, and then I will select all of the molecules. Then click Expand. So this basically just pulls out and enlarges that enzymology column. I can turn this into a live sortable spreadsheet by clicking Enable Sortable Cells. Now I can do things like sort by parameter or by value. It is also printable. What about exporting the data? First go back to the results overview. Clicking on the Export button displays a menu for selecting formats and other options. Some of these can be pre-selected in the settings. I will export the data to Excel. Here you can see the molecule identifiers, therapeutic class, PKA, log P, and further information about it. Take a look at the units. These units have been normalized according to my preference, which was nanomoles. And since this is an Excel spreadsheet, you can use the functionality to analyze the data. For example, use the pivot table for a comparison of company and ID number. Just select pivot table, and then look for company in the list, and drag it to this box. Look for molecule ID, and drop it to this box, and we'll be able to see the number of molecule IDs per company. Then remove blanks from the list, then sort the list by ID in descending order. So now you can see which company has the greatest number of substances on this list. When I was introducing this demo, I said that I was looking for substances that were active against AKT1, but not so active against AKT2. Return to the query page by clicking the appropriate arrow. All we need to do now is add another column to this query 
to accommodate the AKT2 parameters. Select two columns from the drop-down menu. Select AKT2 from target name. Select the icon next to parameter, then select IC50, KI, and KD. Click Add. This time the values must be greater than or equal to 1000 nanomoles. I will type in 1000 for each and set the units to nanomoles. So now we want to retrieve substances that each have IC50 less than 100 nanomoles for AKT1 and greater than 1000 nanomoles for AKT2. And then click Get Molecules and Activities. Click the center arrow to view the results. 45 substances are retrieved. Click to view the assay data for one of these substances. Notice that the results for AKT1 are less than or equal to 100 nanomoles, and the results for AKT2 are greater than or equal to 1,000 nanomoles. That concludes this demo. Thank you for listening. If you'd like more information about Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry, please visit Elsevier.com and click on Reaxis Medicinal Chemistry. Thank you.